Doctors in Manitoba are warning today that province could soon be next to see a disaster in its health care system. Case numbers are surging, and as a result, more than 200 doctors have signed an open letter saying hospitals are hitting their limits, and so are the people who work there. It's like watching a train crash occur in slow motion as we see um, the pandemic continuing to explode and our numbers increasing and our ability to care for increased numbers um, becoming um, diminished. In the letter, the doctors are urging everyone in the province to follow the public health rules and to be proactive to avoid more infections and more lives lost. And they're calling on the province to act, too, to impose tougher restrictions, to extend lockdowns and expend access to vaccines as well. We'll talk about the substance of the letter in more detail now with Dr. Lisa Brisky, who is the first signatory on that letter. We've met her on our program before, a retired ER doctor who was called back in to serve on the front lines during the pandemic, and she's in Winnipeg with us this morning. Welcome back, Dr. Brisky. Thank you, Heather. I'm going to talk, uh, ask you about what you're specifically calling for in just a moment, but I would like to begin with what is your, your view of the situation right now in Manitoba and what is your greatest concern? I think our Manitoba situation is uh, rising cases. We're approaching about 10% within our actual known cases, new cases per day. And at that point, you don't have an idea of what the reality of number of cases is. It is showing in our ICU admissions, our hospitalizations, uh, and also the cases that are popping up and needing for isolation around those cases all throughout Winnipeg, as well as different areas of the province. It sounds to it's me a as a concerning I read, situation. Concerning. It sounds to me as I read the, the the wording, you're looking to avoid the very situation that next door neighbor Ontario has been facing. Absolutely, mm -hmm. uh, this virus is much more contagious. The variants that we are now facing in Canada, and to use even old ways of fighting it, where you have soft pedaling on restrictions, is not going to work. As you see in Ontario, as Alberta is now seeing full force. And anything we can do to stop any part of Canada suffering this and also support other provinces going through this with strict restrictions, I think it's imperative. So the exact opposite of soft peddling you're now calling for in this letter signed by, as I mentioned, more than 200 of your colleagues there in the province of Manitoba. Three parts to this, as I see it, as you call on the Manitoba government, the government of Brian Pallister, to number one, it sounds like close down more, restrict more. Can you address what you'd Absolutely. specifically like to see on that point? We know that this virus is most uh, contagious when you are indoors, when you are in, within close proximity with people indoors, because there is a component of both droplets as, as well as aerosolization, as well as masking. So we want anything that is activities that are indoors and non-essential to be shut down. We as well, we have outdoor restrictions right now that are con you know, not congruent with this idea. You have like four people from different households that can eat at a patio. I know of no table that seats people two meters apart and you're unmasked eating and laughing. You might as well be licking off each other's plates. The second part is vaccinate our teachers, our school workers, and our, uh, so our child care workers. Um, immediately put them on the vaccination uh, eligibility. Okay, can, uh, I, can I just vulnerable. pause you right there, Dr. Brisky? Oh, so that's sort of, no, that's okay. That's sort of the second part of the, of the call that you're looking for. And I've just been checking the numbers out of Manitoba. Uh, just over 30% of the population of the province now with one dose at least. But you're calling for a broader access, even even faster pace to, to vaccine eligibility than the, than the government is moving? Yes, ideally it would be 24-7 to get vaccines in arms as soon as possible. And ideally for people that are within that vulnerable portion of the population who have some indoor activities where they are in close proximity. Right now in Manitoba, the under uh, 20 to 40s are a big part of what is increasing for new case numbers, as well as people who are in under 20 category for age. We need to protect these people as much as possible. And the third component to your call is increased financial support. What are you looking for there? 
we need to have people have a safety net of sick leave and vacation, you know, vaccination leave, sorry, not vacation. We all need a vacation from this virus. Uh, but we need to have people who are supported in this. You've seen in Ontario, as well as now starting in Alberta, that when people are not supported in um, taking time off to isolate, taking time off if they are mildly ill with any symptoms, and if they are in contact of other people, that they feel forced to go to work to try and save their job. And that puts both themselves in their health and other people around them, their health's at risk. We need to have people to have access to vaccines and be able to feel like they can safely leave their jobs to go get those vaccines. Otherwise, they will be missing appointments as well. So this financial support is a must. It's not a handout. It's a must within these really, really uh, pandemic times. These are arguments we've heard in other provinces, indeed in other jurisdictions. And you mentioned Ontario, certainly the kind of pressure that's been on the, the government of, of Doug Ford to respond, and it has. And other provinces do have that paid vaccination leave that you're calling for as well. Um, Manitoba doctors doing what we've seen doctors do in other provinces. They really have to, to make their campaigns public, put a lot of public pressure on the provincial governments before there is any sort of, of response. Are you getting any indication from the Pallister government that there is a receptive, you know, that they're receptive to the kinds of things that you're calling for? Or what are you expecting from them to do? We'll see today when they talk. Um, there was a rumor that there might be today some change to the vaccine eligibility, and we'll see what they say about the rest uh, with this. We have the capacity that we talk about within our healthcare system is actually borrowing from uh, the other parts. Um, it's not new capacity. What we're dealing with already is the, de the problem with the capacity. We've got a backlog that is significant of surgeries and procedures waiting to go. Anything that increases the chance of this virus taking over increases the risk of more uh, procedures and surgeries being delayed. Uh, we've got a, quite the deal with this. Yes. I mean, you mentioned Alberta as well. And in Alberta, one of the things that we have seen are anti-lockdown protests, anti-mask protests. Anytime there's a tightening of the restrictions, the people in that province, many people, uh, react negatively toward them. What do you think is the appetite among Manitobans for tighter restrictions? I think Manitobans, there are little pockets, but I think Manitobans in general have really put in a lot of effort to this past year. And I've seen that in my day to day. My colleagues comment on that, that people are really trying. And we just need to have restrictions that make sense to them and, and help put that on the table that we're a team working for this together. Dr. Brisky, thank you. We'll be listening in today for any future announcements from the province. Really appreciate your time this morning. Dr. Lisa thank Brisky. You. Thank you, Heather.